Hi, I'm Tim, and welcome to Watch You Want. Thanks for logging on. The Great Danes are back. You're looking at the Lind Verdland Spido Speed Carbon Green. Now, in addition to being my favorite color and a 2014 Baselworld novelty debut, this watch, which combines the classic elements of Linda Verdland industrial techno cool design with a chronograph and exotic materials, brings Linda Verdland's design ethic refined since 2004 into the second decade of the 21st century. The bottom line is that this company, building microscopic volumes by hand between its bases in London, Denmark, and Switzerland, has risen to become an upstart challenger to the likes of Hublot and Audemars Piguet in hardly any time at all. Even compared to Hublot, which has only been around since 1980, Linda Verdlin, now only celebrating their first complete decade in business, has been been a meteoric upstart rise, and it's because of watches like this Spido Speed Carbon Green. Now this watch, which measures 44 millimeters across, 46 millimeters from lug to lug, is part of the modern class of oversized, technically themed sports watches that seeks to bring basically the machine on the inside into, onto the outside. The exterior of the watch is as technically styled and technically themed as the movement itself, if not more so. So let's start with a wrist impression talk a little bit about ergonomics and then break down this watch thematically and mechanically. Now on the wrist, Linda Verdlin's case is remarkably comfortable. First and foremost, it's a great fit. The strap conforms to my wrist, which is six and a third inches, 16 centimeters. It sits lightly and I'm going to say that compared to the 44 millimeter, 45 millimeter Audemars Piguet Royal Oak Hublot Big Bang, this is probably the best fit of the three. In terms of comfort, a big part of that is just the flat shape of the case back, the almost total absence of lugs. You can see there really isn't, I like to say when a lug curves or conforms closely to the edge of a case that it's a close conforming lug, there is almost no lug here. It's almost like some of the cushion case watches of the 70s that basically just had a strap hooked to the side with no real lug projecting out from the case itself. So the watch fits my wrist well, even though my wrist, like I said, is only about 16 centimeters in uh, circumference and fairly small. The bottom line is that this sits light. It's not just a good fit. Made entirely of ceramic, titanium, and forged carbon, there's not much mass to this watch. So it's a light and friendly wrist presence, and it's something that you can almost forget you have on. Between the easy fit of that cushion-shaped case and the complete lack of weight, it has no pendulum effect on the wrist. I've worn this one around a little, and I've been very pleased by the finish, the feel, the comfort on the wrist. There's nothing sharp to dig your wrist. It doesn't grab hairs or pull skin. And of course, despite its size, it's a bit of a gentle giant. It also looks great. If you're into the big watch look, you'll like this watch. If you're not into big black watches, you'll probably look elsewhere. This is a polarizing love it or hate it look. You could argue that this is almost like the Dodge Viper of watches. It's going to inspire passions one way or the other, but that's a good thing. And as one of only 99 built, Linda Verdlin doesn't need too, too many people to love this watch because waiting lists for these watches, and when we have them, they go quick, but waiting lists for these watches are long and they are in demand. As a brand on the rise, I would say that the brand equity and recognition of Linda Verdlin is rising rapidly, probably in proportion to where they started, outpacing Hublot and Audemars. And the bottom line is that they've gotten that way with style that pulls no punches. So let's start with the case of this watch. All forged carbon, it's highly technical with voids and reliefs and recesses, nooks and crannies. It almost has the look of a, a sort of organic husk or a shell, like a piece of a coral reef dried up and washed ashore. It also has a gorgeous grain to it where you can actually see the overlapping threads of the carbon fiber components that go into the forged composite. So in a very real sense, although there are 99 of these, no two are the same. Much like Audemars Piguet, which uses the same kind of unidirectional forged carbon fiber as opposed to the woven type used by Hublot and others, the fibers themselves kind of lie where they fall. They get frozen in place by the forging and curing process, and you wind up with a pattern in which no two cases, even of the same dimensions and measurements, are going to have exactly the same grain and texture, and I like that a lot. Very individual, very beautiful. It also shows you where the material comes from with part of the process, the production process, captured in the final product. Moving on to the bezel, you can see that it's got a couple of layers to it with relieved sections around the circumference, but the bottom line is that it's ceramic, so it's very tough, and it acts as a sort of shield to protect the forged carbon case. Now, while forged carbon isn't particularly vulnerable. It's nice to have that scratch-proof ceramic on top. It's just like the sapphire. 
that first line of defense against damage or scuffs or scratches to your case. And it also adds a lot of value because you don't have to worry about that weathered, worn down sports watch look that often comes on big bezel watches where the bezel is inevitably the first piece to strike anything and everything that gets in the way. And everything gets in the way for those who've owned Royal Oaks. Now the bottom line of the dial is that the focal point is really beneath the dial. That's why you have two layers of sapphire. The first sapphire obviously is the crystal. The second sapphire is the platform for the indexes and the subdial registers that you see. Now there is a chapter ring that's slightly dished around the edge. You can see where it joins at the indexes. The indexes are actually a two-part applique that flows from that dished rehaut onto the sapphire crystal that serves as that platform for the calibrations over the main the main plate and the bridges. Now you can see that the main plate of the watch has actually been skeletonized extensively to reveal the motion works, to reveal the escapement right there with its shock protection built in. You can actually see all of the works below the subdials that are driving the chronograph indications. And because it's so extensively skeletonized, Linda Verdlin took one last measure just to increase the contrast between the skeletonized plate itself and what lies beneath. And that's the application of 5N red gold plating onto the plate, onto the plate itself. So you could see that there's a sort of skeletal structure, a lattice work of sorts, that is coated with red gold to really pop. So you have that machine beneath, then you have the red gold on the base plate. And then above that, you have the sort of suspended floating indexes and subdials on that second sapphire window. And then of course you have the dished chapter ring, and you have the sapphire crystal, the main sapphire crystal above that, with titanium plated skeletonized dauphine hands. Very dramatic, and of course there's a large, elaborate, fully skeletonized chronograph seconds hand that I'm going to start there just so you can see it in motion. It's a little easier to see as it moves. It doesn't obscure the view of any of the works. It's a great subtle touch. Now when you turn the movement, or you turn the watch over, you can see the Linda Verdlin this is the LW06. This is based on the Concepto C2251, in many ways similar to the Valju 7750. It also packs all the advantages of the 7750. Approximately a 50 hour power reserve, automatic winding, very, very tough. This watch has the ability to be basically a set it and forget it watch. If you just wear this one all the time, you'll really never have to fiddle with it. 27 jewels, very rugged, features a very interesting finish. Now, Linda Verdlin has on the winding system bridge created this sort of spider web pattern, and that's a recurring motif throughout the watch. You can sort of see it through the side on the crown right here. There's a spider. There's spider webbing patterns all over the dial. They're subtle. You've got to look for them, but they're there. There's a spider web pattern that is sort of etched into the case back right here. Let me see if I can find that little guy. Ah, uh, here it is right here. And of course, there is the spider pattern that is sort of etched into the winding bridge as well. And Linda Verdlin goes all out with the detailing. You can see that the skeletonized winding rotor actually features a very subtle LW electric green color. The finishing standards of this movement are interesting and fairly high. Considering it is based on a 7750 architecture, Linda Verdlin really goes out of the way to make this one look exceptional. You have the PVD color on the winding rotor itself and the winding system bridge, and then below that, you have a high polish on all the elements that involve the chronograph. Below that, the base plate features a sort of gunmetal PVD, and that PVD sort of, ma sort of matches the tone of the winding rotor and the bridge of the winding system. So it has real depth to it, and that depth is defined by the different colors and contrasts. Subtle. Linda Verdlin, that's Morton Linda and Jorn Verdlin, respectively the designer and the financier slash career jeweler behind the company, have an eye for design. They are Danish, just like the Sydney Opera House and Legos, which bring their own Scandinavian artistic flair to different disciplines. The Linda Verdlin watch brings a sort of Scandinavian design ethic to the high-tech oversized sports watch sector with a rugged movement, a groundbreaking combination of ceramic, sapphire, forged carbon, and titanium inner case. This watch is also highly modular. It can dock with the Reef and the Rock sports computers that the company manufactures. Now those systems are designed for skiers, spelunkers, 
cave explorers, scuba divers, water skiers. If you want to dive with a modern dive computer and not have to count on a mechanical watch and a ratcheting bezel to keep you alive, that's what the reef is for. You just click it on, it docks with these little ports on the side of the case, that's why they're there. Linda Verdlin gives you that modular functionality and they design and manufacture the reef and the rock themselves to control quality and features. Moreover, they even integrate, interestingly, with the movement itself in as much as the chronograph features a little charged indication right there at the four hour mark on the chronograph hours subdial, you start the chronograph when you plug in the reef and the rock. They each take exactly four hours to charge their lithium batteries. And when the chronograph reaches that charged indication in red right there, that means you're good to go diving, skiing, whatever you like. Modularity extends to the straps. Now this is a combination of textile and calfskin, but what you're actually getting is the ability to quickly unhinge these two titanium bolts here these two right here, and fit any number of Linda Verdland factory accessory straps. If you're into Panerai, you'll understand what this is about already. It's about giving your watch a makeover when you want it. Leather, rubber, Kevlar, textile. They even give you the option to swap out different bracelets. Um, they even give you the option to swap out different clasps. You can go with a pin buckle. You can go with the deployant. On their website, Linda Verdland, you get a lot of options and a lot of different ways to dress up this watch and make something that's already unique even more special. So check out this Linda Verdlin Spido Speed Carbon Green on our website Watch You Want. It is 100% complete. On Watch You Want, the Great Danes are back.